amount of time is reduced by 290 degrees. Okay, so um, this being round two, uh, we're ready to go. And on the motion that this house thinks you should all go outside and get some fresh air and exercise, <laughs> I'd like to call on the Prime Minister. And is that uh, Big Al? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. First, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk to you about what online game, video games are. We are witnesses that there are plenty of games in which we are focused on and play as children and like to be focused on them and not, we don't focus on anything else. And we are trying to, to convince you today why these online video games are bad and affect our society in the wrong way and it, they should not be banned because we don't believe they should be banned but we should, they should be limited and we are not going to talk to you about today about how or what or uh, I mean in which way or how but we're going to talk to you why these things these limits limits are going to be placed so we're not going to talk to you and say to you we're going to limit it in this amount of time or in this amount of time or, or for this kind of period we're going to come here to talk to you about why it is important to be stopped first of all let's remember what government's duty is the uh, government is created in order to help its own citizens so when a citizen needs help government can be there to protect them for instance you can be a case where I mean, alcohol, for instance, it's banned for children because it's bad for them, it creates addiction to them, it creates consequences to their liver, it, cons it creates bad affection, and is bad for their health in general. So they, are, they let's say, block it for people under age because it's bad for them. We're, and we are trying to do the same here. We are not trying to ban video games because we don't think the consequences of video games can be harder than alcohol for children, but we are saying that the same way of solving problems can be used here by restricting them for a, for a period amount of time. First of all, because it creates addiction. Second of all, because it, crea it destroys your social life. It makes you have no friends and nothing else. And uh, the third, third thing is you get uh, diseases. These are general, I mean, new diseases called like backache injuries. We've got plenty of people in the world who have uh, with feet, feet injuries because they don't sit properly and they stay in there for like hours and hours and hours and plus we do believe that it can affect the future but before going there I try to I'd like to say that we are not talking for general we're not talking for all the citizens of this country we are talking for the children who don't know and don't know the consequences of this actions really and then they are not let's say fully committed on knowing these kind of things so we think that we have the right as a government to interfere in this kind of situations when people don't know what they need to do and don't know what the, is the best to them and tell them what, how is how things should be done i think that we're going to make a lot of benefits if we do this kind of things what are going to be the benefits that this society will have and will perceive if we do this this uh restrictions first of, first of all i said before we as people, if we play these kind of games, I'll take you in a minute, we have no social lives. We start playing games for hours and hours and hours and hours. For instance, RuneScape is a game in which people play, and I was, I, I played RuneScape since I was 12 years old, and I played for like 8 hours a day, 9 hours a day, and first of all, it affects your life with your family, second of all, it affects your life with your friends, and second, third of all, it affects your, your relationships with girls, even though when you play that much, you cannot have a social life. Uh, yes? Do you need, do, did you want to make a question? Uh, you try to restrict only, uh, online game only for children? Or yeah, yeah. We are, not, we are trying, oh, oh, it's not necessary, I mean, the idea of restricting for all citizens is not right because we are talking for people who don't know the consequences of these actions really and get affected very easily. We don't believe that people who are 30 years, 35 years of age cannot know what the actions are, so we don't want to talk about that and we urge you as a Go as an opposition to not talk about that, uh, we urge you to talk about why children should not be do using this. So I believe in your speeches you have to take care about that. As I was saying, social life is very important. I no, thank you. Uh, it's very important because 
it, affect, it affects it and without social life it's going to be hard for you as a person when you try to uh, adjust to, to your society later on. I know that you can say that you can make friends online for instance because you meet friends in RuneScape, you meet friends on different kinds of games, Dota for instance, but the idea is that if you make friends there, you're never going to meet them. All you're going to do is, no thank you, all you're going to do is going to stay with them and talk with them and you're not, never going to have the real you know, the real conversation which happens only when you talk so, to someone alive. The second thing is going to be that you're going to have a way more healthier life than you have now. If you restrict it, for instance. The idea is that if we, if we stay like eight hours a day, we're not going to do anything else. We're not going to be productive. And all we're going to do is going to stay in computer and eat something. And eat and eat and eat and eat. And that's going to affect our weight. We're going get, to get way more fatter than we are. Our, our body is going to be way more unhealthy than it is. And also, the other thing is going to be that we won't be... It will affect our way of thinking, our way of believing and our way of... Okay? Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, have you ever heard of something that's called age restriction uh, for video games? Yes, but we are talking for all the games. We are not talking only for different, from some violent video games. We are talking for every online video game that creates addiction. As I was saying, it creates also effects on your productivity as a country. For instance, it is a, con a government's duty to make people read as more as they can and create as more knowledge as they can. That's why the schools are created in the first order. And if you make them play eight hours, nine hours a day, and if you allow that, they're not going to be focused on something else. They're going to be focused on playing this game. They're not going to read. They're not going to eat. They're not going to play with others. And that's not going to be anything more than non-productivity. And it's not going to be effective for the society. Also, the other thing is going to be that if we, no thank you, if we're going to play, for instance, all the time these games, even though if we have these kind of camps or need these kinds of things that are going to be beneficial for us and then beneficial for our government, we're going to restrict them. We're not going to come here because we have to play games and we have to stay there. Uh, as an example that explains what we're trying to do here is example when a mother says to the son, Go out and play soccer for like two hours and you're going to come back because you have duty, you have homeworks to do, you have to wash yourself and you have to be ready for school tomorrow. And this is what we're trying to do. We are trying to say to them, okay, you want to play? You have, a, you have your right to play because you live in the age of technology, so you've got that right. But in order to do that, you have way more duties than this. So you have to, when you do that, you're going to come home, you're going to get ready and you're going to be focused on other things which are going to help our society as a whole and it's going to help him as an individual. So what we are trying to do here is not pursue, is not discriminate someone. We are trying to make it to make our individuals and our government and our states as a whole more stronger. Uh, so I beg you to propose. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, basically why we are here today is to tell you why that uh, that go uh, why the government should not place limits on the amount on the amount of time its citizens uh, play online games. Uh, the opening government tried to convince us that by playing these kind of on online games focused on uh, the children, uh, they are being like uh, they are being uh, the parasites of the society and cannot uh, are not taking part on of on the social life. Uh, uh, are not taking part on the social life. We believe, we strongly believe as opposition that it is not, it is not the responsibility of a government to see if these children are being involved in the social life or aren't being in involved in the social life. This responsibility goes to the parents of these children and goes to the people who educate these children. So there is no law that we can, uh, we can confirm we, and there is no way they can obey to a law we, which we will produce and they will, uh, they will respect because of, uh, but they are children and probably they won't know that there's something uh, as uh, we call a limited, a limited time on which we can play or which uh, they can play. We are going to strongly. Uh, no, thank you. We are going to strongly um, uh, to strongly back our back up our case by uh, presenting to you three arguments. The first argument is the right of choice. The, every citizen of the, of our country has the right to choose if he wants uh, to play a video game or he doesn't. If he doesn't, thank you. No, thank you. Uh, 
uh, or they, he doesn't want to play, uh, doesn't want to play. Especially the children. The children are the best, uh, the best part of our society. The most, uh, the most beautiful part of our society, and the most productive, productive and crea creative uh, side of our government. No, thank you. Uh, so by allowing them play these games as long as they want, we will, uh, we will. Uh, we will have effect in their future education because uh, almost all of these games give us uh, information how social lives goes on and how uh, things go and how they can be no thank you uh, how they can be educated we are always talking about games which are allowed and do not have an age restriction for example there are games which have an age restriction until 12 years old or un until 18 years old which children anyway aren't allowed to be playing so uh, we are not going to change anything on the status quo even if we create a new law which uh, supports the fact that this time on the internet should be limited for children who want to play uh, we cannot control it in any way because I anyway they are going to play and it's their right to play Please. Uh, it is uh, government, first of all, government can't impose limits on how much alcohol a person can buy on how, or on how much a person can consume alcohol because basically uh, the government has created laws which uh, allow people to sell alcohol and have allowed alcohol in these countries. In the moment that, that people allow alcohol and they get an age restriction of, or for example 18 years old, thank you or 21 years old in America, uh, they have allowed them to uh, be buying these things and on their, uh, on their sake mind to use these things or not use these things. Uh, there are even worse things, for example, drugs, it's a worse thing and the government hasn't allowed it. So uh, if, if uh, the video games could, harm the, uh, could give uh, this harm to the society, then the governments wouldn't allow them, uh, wouldn't allow them at all. Our second argument is the pleasure of the citizens. A reason why the government is chosen and is working for its citizens is because it also should, uh, should give something for the so social life of the citizens and should give something for the pleasure and for their cu cultural, no thank you, for their cultural, uh, cultural progress. These kind of video games are video games which connect people between different countries, are online video games which create people uh, uh, within different countries. So, not only that we are not, uh, we are not getting them away from, no thank you, from the social life within that country, but we are cre creating new social networks, which are, no thank you, we are creating new social networks which are going to be spread all around the world and obviously we are creating connections between people which can be used, even though they are children now, they can be used in the future for different benefits. Our third point is the benefits from video games. We have been talking about all the benefits and uh, the government side has been talking about the benefits that would bring us, uh, if we shouldn't allow them play as long as they want, would bring us. But in fact, the benefits are quite much more uh, uh, valuable on the side of the opposition because uh, the, gov the benefits which we propose are the, uh, the uh, educational benefits of these children and the economical be benefits of the country. First of all, the educational benefits which are sake for our, uh, for our side are that these children, by taking part in different, uh, uh, in different games online, which are also, again I will uh, say, which are uh, limited for their age, will have educational benefits. Why? For example, there are different games around the world which are, for example, math games or uh, languages games and uh, they offer educational, uh, educational tracks for these children. There's a program which is uh, called Learning Together and which uh, offers this, these children the opportunity to learn together with different people uh, from different countries of the world. Are these learning games video games? They are video games. As long as they are on internet and are video game, are visual games, they are video games. So, basically, uh, basically, what we are trying to say here is that, that the benefits are quite bigger if we do not uh, place limits on the time. The economical b benefits of, this, um, of these things are going to be so, uh, so big too. For example, if a government, uh, uh, if a large amount of people has, uh, uh, goes to the internet, is in the internet, it's online, goes online, 
for a longer time then we will uh, obviously they will pay they will yeah, they will be paying in a way or another more taxes to this uh, to these governments they will be paying for playing these games and they were allowed by the which were allowed to be sold by these governments there is a mechanism which controls the online life of a country and there is a mechanism which allows or doesn't allow video games to be published in this place. This mechanism has created a new uh, an, uh, way for finding out if these students are uh, on the perfect age to be playing a, a game or are not in the perfect age, are not in the age which is allowed to be played. So basically we have control and what government is proposing is not going to change the status quo. So because of this reason I've been telling you during this speech, I beg you to uh, oppose. Thank you. Right, so, we have a thing called society. We've had this since we first evolved. Humans are social animals, we all work in groups. In this society, we have duties, needs and obligations. All our duties, needs and obligations are beneficial to ourselves and to the society in general. We all work with each other and this is the basis of our society, it's people working together and of the economy, I would say. So, imagine you have this situation and then, suddenly, through new technology, you have people who don't think in the real world, and who don't think in social terms, but think in their own virtual worlds, which are artificially made and which have no consequence in their lives or other people's lives. These are what video games are. This is creating a virtual world that is a distraction and a harm to the real world, and this is what I'm going to explain in my speech. We've talked about the government's responsibility to stop this kind of effect, this kind of effect that causes alienation. We've said how if someone is continuously playing video games, as many children do, as many people do in this world, then they become alienated from society, they lose their connection, they don't have a social life, they get addicted, they have physical problems. There are actually people in Japan who have died because of constant gaming, and these, these are the kind of people that these children are going to become. We have said already that this is just going to be restrictions on children because adults do have, can have to make a choice, but obviously they've been playing video games from a very young age, so this is how we're going to stop the problem in general. Now, the, yes? Uh, is it the responsibility of the government or is it the responsibility of parents of the child to take care of the child? Well, of course, if a parents are responsible, but the government has a responsibility too. We advocate that a government should be responsible for the people. The government shouldn't let things go on like this. If parents are neglecting a child, and if parents let a child, as we've said, drink alcohol or take drugs, then the government, of course, has a responsibility to stop that. Because in any government that has any say over society, in any government that has any responsibility over its people, in any government that has any validity, you have to stop this. I'll take you. Um, you said about kids. How do you find people who don't know about addiction? How you fight these kids in the internet, or how how you be uh, how you block how you how you place limits to the kids only for kids? What do you mean only for kids? This like we're advocating how. No, how no. you find out about kids? How am I finding out about kids? Well, everyone knows. I mean, kids play video games a lot. It's in general, you know, it's quite common knowledge that many children do play video games and many children do get addicted to video games. I'm going to continue my speech and I won't take any more points for a while. Um, yes, as I was saying, the government does a responsibility because the government is a social government. The government has a responsibility for the people living in the society and for the benefit of the society itself. Now, as well as this, the opposition has said that you can place age restrictions on video games. You can stop kids playing certain video games and that this is going to solve the problem. This is completely invalid because the problems we are talking about are common to all video games. The problems we are talking about are the problems that come from living in a virtual world and from, from playing games like this that distract you from real life. You don't have any educational motivation. You don't have any motivation to learn about other stuff. You don't have any motivation to go out and meet real people because you are being affected by this, you know, this artificial world that is taking you away from all that. These um, age restrictions are based around the content of the video games, they're based around violence, they're based around whatever might be in them. This is completely irrelevant to our argument. You've talked about the benefits of video games. You say that people learn from them. You say that people uh, learn about society and that you know, they become real good citizens from playing on the computer. This is completely baseless. Are you more likely to learn about social life 
from video games or actually living in society? Are you more likely to learn about how people work than actually going out to your village green and seeing real people and playing whatever you want to with them or seeing real people and talking whatever you want to with them about? Or are you more likely to learn from some virtual world that's created by some company who simply wants to sell their profit for the means of entertainment? These aren't companies that work for social benefit. This isn't a benevolent enterprise. These are people who simply want to entertain you. These, um, and this is, a re this is, of course, of, this is of course what makes it clear that there's not going to be any motivation for these video games to be educational. And they aren't. There are some that involve, such as um, SimCity, uh, in like designing cities and all this. But... As I've said, that's an artificial world, and you can't put that over the real world. As well as that, there are many games that have no social benefit, uh, no educational dimension at all. No matter how shallow it is, they're simply violent video games. How does Counter-Strike teach you about, you know, uh, learning to work with people? Um, they've also talked about the importance of children. They said that these are the most creative and important people in our society. This isn't only taking children away from social life. This is taking them away from any other skills which they might develop. Video games are uniquely dominating. They take up a lot of your time and they are addictive. Drawing or, um, you know, um, any other activities, I can't think of them now, but many other activities aren't just as dominating as video games and many other activities wouldn't take up so much time. Video games are unique in the way that they kind of eat everything else, consume all and become the only motivation in the person's life. So what have we talked about? We've talked about the government's responsibility to stand for society. We've talked about the way the government has to act for the benefit of the common good, to stop alienation in society, to stop sorry, to stop people being cut off from the real world to stop this kind of virtual world that takes away from everything. Yes? Why do you, what do you mean about alienation of the society? Well, that's what I've talked about. If you become caught off from the real world, if you uh, don't know how to work with people, and if you simply learn in your own artificially designed virtual world, then of course you're going to be alienated. This is the same kind of, you know, these are the problems that video games cause. At least in alcohol, you know, you're going out to meet people, you, work, you learn how to work with people, and I'm not saying the physical, you know, the disadvantages of alcohol are obviously much more than video games, but video games are unique in this sense, that they do cut people off from society. Now, the mentality that this creates is another thing that we've talked about. The way people think, they are living in their own world, they are living in this world where they can do anything, and where they can live in this world of violence and war, where they can be a hero by killing people or whatever else. This is a bad mentality for any individual. This isn't on the social scale, this is more on the individual scale. This is talking about the way people think about the world and themselves. This is, way, this is talking about you know, how people view what is right and what is wrong, because a video game isn't the right way to teach that. If you, uh, you know, are good working in school and you, you have you know, proper, uh, responsible parents and you, you're learning from working with people about social dynamics and about what's right and wrong, then you learn about morals, you learn about ethics. In a video game, you're living in a world without right and wrong, you're living in a, win a world where you can win or where you can lose. And that's all that matters to you. Thank you. The motion of today is that these always believe that government should place limits on the amount of time it is in and play online game. We are opposite, op opening opposition. We are against the motion. And uh, opening government gave three arguments and they talk about age restriction, but in the motion they don't, take, they don't put age restriction in the motion. We don't talk about if the citizen, if if the citizen or child, child, children, or young people or major people, adult, but they talk about the citizen, the role of the government to place limit of of the about the citizen. Only the citizen. They don't take if you are teenager or young people. 
But they talk about all virtual world. But it's it's for the citizen. It's only for the citizen who have to take care about the bad side of the online games. But the the citizen on only look for the his happiness. But the the government can't limit that if they have the responsibility to give the happiness, that for happiness for us for their citizen. If you take care badly for your children, the government interferes. Does it mean that you, the government has the right to interfere exactly in the same thing when you play online, when it is sees as bad for, for the society? The responsibility of the government is to, to give the people, the citizen, their citizen right to their, to their happiness. To protect this right to happiness for the people. No, thank you. Um, our, the, 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 the second argument is it decreases social life. When you play with online game, it's not decreasing. It it not decreasing. Uh, it don't. It doesn't decrease social life because you meet some some somebody. You can meet somebody else, and you in the real life you meet some this person that will have to make friendship with her, with him or with her. And they talk about affect your life. Your life. Family, your family life, friendship, and don't have a real conversation. I don't think that it's the role of the government to take care about the internal affairs of family, but about it's for the family to take care about their internal life. No, thank you. They talk about the for argument, the benefit of the com. They talk about the only the benefit of the companies. I f I want to no, thank you. I want to say that when the companies of online game. Make more money. They will pay more taxes. The government. It's an economic economical benefit for the government because they will have more profit, more taxes to this company, and the citizen gonna pay. Will always pay for taxes for water, for electricity, for all the things that the government have to give them. Yes, and no, thank you. They talk about the world can you live in a world that you can be lose and and win. But we are here to debate. We we, we make a debate now. But one team gonna hear, one team gonna lose. In the real life you can lose and you can win in the real life too. But about our arguments, we give three arguments. The respect the government have to respect the choice of the citizen. We have to say that the government have to respect the choice of the citizen. He has to protect. He has to protect his citizen choice. And when citizen, no, thank you. When citizen look for happiness, they can't limit the happiness of the citizen because it's the responsibility of the government to make to respect and to protect the right of the of their citizen. No, thank you. We are talking about. Uh, when they the open a team the open a government talk about they're gonna control that they're gonna make it no thank you they're gonna make a limit on on only on the younger people or children with strep but all oh, they are going to to control that that they don't give anything that well oh, they are get. No, thank you the our second argument is about pleasure of the citizen. The citizen is the right for, to look for its happiness. And the government have the responsibility to give the citizen all the things that he can to, to, the, to find this happiness. And he can't limit the happiness of the yeah. other citizen. Yeah. No, thank you. Mm, the, our third argument is about the benefit from video games. The, we are two points in this argument. Educational print, print and economic, economical print. We have educational print that children in learning in playing online game can can make an education that their parents, if their parents don't have time to give them, because they have mathematic games, they are language games, they are grammar games, they are biological games that you can you can use. To make you to make your own skills to to improve your own skills in online game, you can't the city the government can't limit this 
this guy too. But we are talking about the economic benefit from Sir? from the no thank you of the government. When the companies online companies game make more profit, they gonna pay more taxes, not more tax in for the government because they are they make more more profit and they it's about how much they gain or they get to give the tax to the government and the uh, citizen gonna pay you will also will always pay the taxes from water electricity and so forth thank you Ladies and gentlemen, let us, let us look at the, uh, the course of the debate so far. We see the opposition team coming and strongly opposing the motion, which is, allow me to, uh, to repeat it, whether governments should limit the time people spend on playing video games and want to, to turn it into a debate about whether video games in general are good or not, on how much time or whether children should have access or should be denied to some, some types of video games, and about the benefits of video games in general and how we should increase consumption because that's going to benefit the state. Well, in my speech, I am going first to address, to have some, some points of rebuttal to their case and prove how most of their case doesn't actually deal with the problem we're having right now, doesn't address the problems with the status quo and then move on to show why the government is entitled to limit the time and how it doesn't interfere with the people's right of choice and it, how it doesn't prohibit video games in general. So first of all, to, uh, moving to my points of rebuttal. The opposition comes and talks about the right of choice, about how people have the right to play video games, which the government has never said anything about. The government never, never said anything about pro prohibition. Nobody wants to take the right to play video games away from people, especially since they are and they are effectively regulated right now by age limits, and which is not which is not uh, uh, of any concern right now. What we what we stand for is limiting that choice. No, thank you, because as the people and the government has found suitable to to allow alcohol consumption or to bad consumption, it still limits that consumption for the benefit of the citizens. For instance, um, uh, shops aren't allowed to sell alcohol after a certain hour and tobacco is allowed to be smoked only in certain places in order for all the citizens to, to be able to benefit from that, which is exactly what we want to do with the video games. People should, uh, the, the time people spend on uh, video games should be limited because first of all of some detrimental effects which we talked about but they are still not strong enough to prohibit them in general so therefore they, uh, they call only for a limit and second of all for the uh, for the interest of the government and how it is entitled to meddle in this situation but I'll get on to that later then they also talk about the social life of people and they also agree with us with the, with the government that a social that uh, having a healthy social life is of a concern to any government that, that actually takes interest into the life of their citizens yes a healthy society is one in which communication is encouraged and once you don't limit the time which is actually the problem of the status uh, that the status quo is facing right now where people abuse video game uh, abuse uh, the access they have to the video games and spend their entire days and nights and, and develop sleeping disorders and um and dedicate their entire uh, their entire free time to playing video games. That doesn't actually encourage a social life from our point of view. And in the same time, they also talk about how uh, we should protect the gamer. We should try to give him as much access to the video games as possible, but in, and and increase his social lives and social and social skills. But let's look at the other side of the problem. What about the families? What about the, that gamer's friends? What about the other people who don't have access to him because he spends all of his time playing video games? We don't think on side government that that encourages a, a healthy society. And moving on to the point of responsibility of the government. The government is responsible for, uh, for, um, for all of its citizens. And here I'd like to bring up the, the example of how the government is entitled, for instance, if, 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 even, if, even if a child's parents find it suitable for him not to attend primary school or not to receive education, the government is entitled and uh, is able to, to file lawsuits against those parents because it has decided that it is much more appropriate for everybody and for all of the children in his country to receive an education, which is exactly what the government would do in this case when it comes to limiting the time people spend. It doesn't take away their right. It doesn't infringe, it, it, it doesn't meddle with, with, with the authority parents have over their children. It just simply f puts in some limits it has found suitable and documented 
to be, uh, to be able to work. Oh, and about the, the points about the benefits and how the taxes will increase, we are talking about online gaming and online gaming is a pri is is a whole private industry if, uh, if for instance a company in the united states provides uh, provides a platform for online video gaming that doesn't mean that the, the, the citizens will pay more taxes to its own state so therefore it is actually not beneficial for the state if i live for instance in moldova and they play games no thank you that are uh, that are commercialized by a platform uh, in in the uh, in the united states that doesn't mean that my country will benefit from that it is only going to be in the detriment and now moving on to our own constructive case where i would like to talk about how, first of all, about how uh, the government is concerned the, about the diseases and the detriments that um, that uh, that uh, too much and abuse of online video gaming has, and then talk about how it affects the productivity, which is uh, inherent, uh, which which is inherent to a state's development, and is is why it, it's the main reason why it's actually entitled to meddle with it. So first of all, uh, both. Uh, um, it is empirically demonstrated that there are diseases such as ADHD or other other types of um, of diseases of, of mental diseases that uh, come that derive from video game playing and abuse of, of, of video games. Now, people who tend to spend too much time on video gaming, uh, who spend about 18 hours a day in front of a computer and not be, not even going to the bathroom or not even eating, uh, develop all sorts of concentration uh, concentration issues, which decreases their uh, capability to, to focus properly, even in, uh, in the moment, even in academic instances, please. Okay, basically, uh, so these people who play video games are staying a long time in front of the computer. Also, the office workers stay a long time on the computer. Mm. Is uh, your government? Yes. To, to yes, the government has action? already has already taken actions in that permit, in that aspect. No office worker is in t uh, should stay 18 hours a day in front of his computer, and absolutely no CEO or no no company forces its employees to spend that much time in front of a computer and to engage in activities that uh, that, that sometimes um, meddle with his uh, his ability to concentrate or to focus. Then we also have posture problems and all sorts of other um, uh, pro problems with posture problems that affect uh, people's vision which is act which is something that is is the concern of governments because a healthy society both physically and mentally is something that um, the government already seeks to provide by healthcare. The government is interested in having healthy citizens. Well, of course, because that would increase its productivity and its state, but uh, and its uh, and its development. But it already provides it provides these things. It, it wants to, to to have a healthy society and uh, abusing uh, abusing the time people spend on uh, and uh, abusing video games doesn't help people stay healthy. And moving on to my uh, last point about the productivity, let me give you a simple, um, a simple roadmap about how these things happen. When children develop the habit of spending 18 and even more hours a day gaming, they uh, maintain this habit up until they go to, uh, they go onto the university, which, uh, um, which then decreases their amount, the amount they could, the, of time they could concentrate, and which eventually uh, makes uh, worse workers uh, from them. So because uh, of them, because of the problems in the status quo that haven't been addressed by the opposition, I strongly beg you to propose. Okay, thank you very much. And um, now, from the closing opposition, we're going to have uh, Eldar. So, hello ladies and gentlemen, uh, judges, my uh, opponents, my colleagues. And today's motion slides like this house um, believes that government should place limits on the amount of time its citizens play online games. And we strongly disagree with this motion. For some facts I will, I will mention in the future. So, what actually our dear proposition team want to say? That um, they didn't actually clarify how they will find uh, how they will know who is teenager or who is adult uh, adult uh, player in the games? How they will find, for example, if I'm 15 or I'm 30, for example, they didn't clarify that fact. And also they didn't clarify how they will limit, how, how hours or what. So you want to say that, for example, if they will give age restriction, so what else? If there will be age restriction, the teenagers can easily uh, make 
fake accounts, for example, to 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 circumvent this age restriction. So we see that you it's it's very difficult to limit, for example, for for teenagers such such, such games. So what I want to say actually more, uh, our uh, position, our actually restriction that. Uh, we want to say that it's not a government responsibility, it's the responsibility of parents to make a restriction for their child children. For example, if I'm a parent and I see how my child play uh, on, online games like 80, 18 hours a day, I will of course go and like maybe sell this computer or stuff like that. So I see that I'm care of my children, not government. I, I should care about my children. Uh, no, thank you. What about actually... Uh, alternative games. Okay, uh, let's imagine that they uh, restrict online games. So what about non-online games? They will also play on non-online games uh, anywhere. They will play, for example, if they play on hour of online game, the rest of the time they will play on non-online games. So we see that it's not a problem of online game, it's a problem of games at all to the children. So I want to say that this restriction should be made by parents. So, uh, yeah. If you cannot control, if you, if you cannot pull the control then the addiction. Is it better to restrict it in some order rather than give it up and by saying uh, we cannot con addi control uh, the addiction? So we let me to clarify uh, to dear judges about this question. Uh, we as a pro we as a position want to say that parents should control. Parents should control. Not government. Government cannot control. No, thank you. Government cannot control. Go it's a millions of people are in this country. How they will control online game? How they will individually find who is teenager, who is not? They they didn't clarify what the method, what the model of the plan. No, thank you. Uh, what do you want to say about? Uh, there is okay. Let me let's imagine that they, they are made some limits on such online games. So we want we want to say that there is a lot of MMO games. There is a lot of online games. So if I, for example, addicted, let's imagine, I play one online game for an hour, and I will play another game for an hour, and I will play another game for an hour. So we see that there is a lot of uh, online games. How how they will control, for example, that there is a huge amount of online games? No, thank you. Um, what I want to say anymore? Uh, it's not a solution to limit. Uh, to, it's not a solution to limit on uh, an, uh, an uh, amount of time on online games. If you wanna say actually that uh, that there is also how how I mentioned before non online games. So if I play for example World of Warcraft for an hour for two hours, it's a limit of government. So what I will play another games which which uh, didn't uh, which. Uh, uh, there's no have to internet access. I will play it like on my computer at all. So you see that government will not control how I play on non-online games. How they will control my non-online games. So now, okay. Point of clarification. Did you hear when I said that uh, we're not going to talk about how it's going to happen, but why it's going to happen? So anyway, you, 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 uh, the, our proposition just avoid some minus of their case. They're trying to say, no, we don't talk, don't talk about that, so that's why we will not talk, talk about it. So we want to say that they avoid the minus of their cases. They avoid the, the problems, the, the, they avoid the clear problems by saying that we, we, don't, we don't talk about how, how it will be. We talk about how many times, how much time there will be restriction. So we see that... Uh, they just uh, avoid these problems. But we want to say that we clarify the problems to you that it's not a solution. That how is motion, how is motion sounds like this house that this house believes that government should place limits. So but we as a proposition want to say that no, that parents should place limits. Parents should be responsible for their child. We all will be a parents, for example, one day, and we want to say that our child, uh, child, we want to say that our child will be healthy, our child will be good. So we want to say that the, about actually diseases that there is some, some vision, but vision of people will be worse. Sir. Okay, vision of people will be worse. Sir. But I have mentioned before, there is also not online games, just simple games. So we see that the vision of the teenagers will be also get worse because they're playing not only like online games, they're playing also just simple games. So we see that it's very difficult or almost impossible to control this system. Uh, by government, so government cannot, uh, government uh, can't just look at all people, look at all teenagers. How, how, in a, uh, how I want to say that on a point of information, I ask, how they will look, how they will find out who is teenager, who is not, who is adult, for example, who can understand what he is doing, who is teenager, who can't understand. They, 
they uh, actually avoid this uh, question also. What about uh, actually benefits of video? Oh, what about actually as a society or what we talk about, about taxes and profit of online games? They said that there is no happy society because child will play all time. Yeah, there will be no happy society that because child will play online all times. Yeah, we agree with that, but we want to say that if they restrict, for example, it's a, if they restrict one part of online games, they will be also just, how I mentioned before, just simple games. They will restrict it, they will be more just simple gaming. So we see that any, any way, be teenagers who are already addicted, they will play anyway games, just simple games, they anyway will play. And you see that the no happy society will be just exist, the status quo will be continued. So we want to say that, we, how's that, how? So let me sum up the, sum up the whole uh, speeches. We want to say that it's not a solution to limit some online games. Uh, it's not a, there is also, oh, sorry. So uh, I guess you understand point of our use. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the final speaker on the proposition bench is the government whip, and that's time. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have perhaps to clarify some things that we've been told that we must clarify. And one, I'm recapping on uh, what our debate has been so far on why we must limit the hours of usage of video games online. I will clarify a few of these things briefly, although I do not feel they're relevant to the debate, and I will explain why they are irrelevant to the debate. First of all, our model can do these things. It can limit the amount of people that certain under 18 spend playing on games because we have these amazing things called IDs, for example. Children have can't have ID cards saying they're above 18. I have encountered such problems before. When I was younger, I had to go and get my parents to sign up for things because I had no proof of age that I was over. However, having said that, I find that relevant because it's not a practical debate. It is a debate over whether the government has the right to meddle in these issues, which we believe that it does. It definitely does. Now, the point of the debate is whether, as I've just said, the government has the ability and the right to meddle in the affairs of the people. And I think this is a horrible way of stating it because we're not particularly meddling in the affairs of the people. We are standing up for the rights of the people, which is what gives us legitimacy as a government. For a government to be legitimate, it must stand up for the rights of the people. And that is why we are standing up for this motion today. What entitles a government to meddle? A government is supposed to protect the rights of the people and supposed to protect the needs of the people. The needs of the people include healthy society. We are social animals. We as humans rely on each other and for all these years we've gone and we've gone out and we've gone and we've been farmers and we've had communities of all practical things that help one another and all of a sudden people can escape to this virtual world and why it is not necessarily a bad thing too much of it the abuse of it is a bad thing not the video games themselves for a healthy society, we have to have people go out there and have actual experiences. While simulations of these, I'm not saying that it's all entirely negative. What I am saying is that it will never be the same thing. To work in a group of people who are working on sign towards a goal that involves killing people is not the same thing as working in real life, where the goal of a group of people is to improve society, or to help out somebody, or to help themselves. It is harming our healthy society. As humans, as societal animals, not the word for the use societal, we need a healthy society, which is what the government must stand for. Secondly, I would like to talk about productivity. It's incredibly important or for children in their formative years to be allowed, or not allowed necessarily, but to be given the right environment to be productive. Not productive in a, oh, I'm going to go out and make money for the government way. Productive in a way where, as has been stated before, Parents, when their children can come home, can say, yes, you can play video games. But because there's a limit, first of all, you have to shower and do your homework and get ready for tomorrow and go and learn and form for later on in your life so you can build a better life for yourself, a better life for your society, and a better life for everyone around you. Taken. Uh, do you think that parents are silly to allow, to allow a child to play 18 hours per day? Yes. Any, <laughs> any parent that lets their child play play 18 hours a day of any video game is, as you have politely stated, silly. Thank you for that point. I will also lead on later to parental responsibilities, which is one of the main points of clash in this debate and something that I would like to address and recap upon. Now, in fact, you know what? Why don't I do that now? Um, 
So, parental rights. Of course, parents are the driving force of human society because parents give birth to children and have both a biological and a societal need, a right to raise their children correctly so that their children can raise better children and we can be happy people. But that does not say that the government cannot meddle in such affairs because the government already meddles in such affairs for the good of the people. For example, if there is uh, supposed abuse of a child and somebody alerts this to the public sector and says, hey guys, there's abuse of a child, the government will come in and say, is there really abuse of a child? And then they will look for abuse of the child and if they find abuse of the child, they will take the child away from the parents because the child should not be abused because that child will soon raise more children and it's also it's right not to be abused. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Yes, point taken. Uh, you think that uh, parents force their children to play uh, 18 hours per day and that's why the government will come to, to the parents and say, hey, you like uh, you abuse your child, so let's make this it's hard. You think that... Thank you for bringing this up again. That's addressing another one of my points. Video games are not forced upon anybody, but they are addictive. I know firsthand, and that will also lead on to another point I have to say about health, which I also know about firsthand. If something is addictive and the parents aren't necessarily neglecting the child, but they don't have the ability... But they don't have the ability to address this addiction, which can often happen, well then the government needs to step in and offer a helping hand. And if the government can do this, why not? Because that keeps its legitimacy, because that is standing up for the rights and the needs of its people. And I will refer back to that, because that is the ideological centre of the debate. It should be about not practicalities. Now, talking about addiction, video games are addictive. And on a micro scale, they do have problems on the person themselves, that the government should stand up and address. For example, and I have proof of this because I am a gamer myself, which would tell you about the ideological correctness of our debate, I have extreme vision problems because I spent 12 hours a day every day on my computer and to be honest, I wish someone had stepped in and said, that's too much, why don't you go out and talk to your friends? Because it's always nice to talk to your friends, but we're always too lethargic to do it, which is horrible. I wish somebody would step in and do this. I also have to use an ergonomic keyboard because I have, repul uh, 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 I have multiple um, injury strains, I'm not quite sure what the illness is called, but it comes from doing the same thing over and over and over again, it wears away at your muscles and gives you strains, in my hands from using the WASD keys too much. Damn you, WASD. Now, that and all of this is obviously the problem of the status quo. The addiction and the health problems on a micro level and problems on a societal level, which are much larger. And again, we're not saying that video games have to be banned because people have the right to play video games. And video games are good, and we think that video games can be good, but we think that the abuse of video games, like the abuse of any other substance, which the government has already stepped in to stop happening, like the abuse of alcohol, you're not allowed to be intoxicated, the abuse of tobacco, and such other substances, the government has already stepped in to help. Why can the government not step in to help to this unrelated issue that is stuck in the status quo? So as a recap, I would like to pull out our main point. It harms society. It harms society by taking people away from the experiences that they should be learning in a healthy society. And it harms society by taking away lovely, productive children who are obviously going to be good for the society. Now, it also hurts people in a micro level. It leads to health issues. It leads to mentality issues. It leads to productivity issues. It leads to issues with being able to deal with society. And another thing I would like to address quickly before I run out of time is that this actually does affect people's social skills. Being a gamer, I know that I can go to people, and I had to spend a while because I spent a whole summer on the computer, and I found it difficult to look someone in the eyes and talk face to face. There are obvious loss in social skills and social life. Those two go hand in hand and create a horrible big problem. So on, on the basis that there is a problem in the status quo, on a micro and macro level, we beg you to propose this motion and propose the government, because the government is good and we like the government. <laughs> There are many arguments in this debate, but there are very, very important two criteria in this debate. Our first criteria is 
is this motion or right, is this limiting a time a solution for uh, what government side, what proposition side set, uh, insists the problem? Um, is this a solution? This is a uh, first criteria. And second criteria is uh, who should restrict stu uh, sorry, uh, children's playing games? This is a second criteria. Okay, uh, I explain uh, first criteria. Is this a solution? Is this motion a solution or not? Okay, <clears throat> firstly, uh, there are two points. Uh, number one, uh, the way of limiting. Uh, in total, uh, the government, uh, the proposition side, uh, haven't proved how to restrict or how to limit the uh, playing, uh, how to limit the p uh, children's playing video game, online video game. No, thank you. Um, uh, and also, uh, they, uh, if the children, uh, when, if ch the, uh, when children make their online video games account, if they uh, make their account as, a, as an adult, then government cannot distingu distinguish the children and adult. No, thank you. So, if, uh, so if uh, the government implements this plan, it is meaningless for uh, uh, to solve the uh, to solve what the government side insists. Please confirm this point. And next, okay. As the motion states, online video games they are being monitored online, and that is the way we are going to control the time limit people get to spend on them. But that is common knowledge, so that is why we haven't expanded on the logistics and details of how this is going to pass. There are ways of monitoring it online, as the motion states. But if uh, I'm 18, but if I make a count as a 20 year or 30 years old adult, then the government cannot distinguish that. We insist that point. So, uh, so we insist that the motion is meaningless. Please confirm this point. And next, number two is uh, this isn't a solution. And please confirm, as, a, as my colleague said, that there are, many, uh, there, uh, there are many ways to escape this uh, district. For example, uh, if, uh, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, first, we admit that the online video game is uh, addictive, uh, uh, addict the children. And many, many children are addicted by the online video game. But what the problem the proposition side insists is not caused by online video games, but caused by games itself. Please go for this point. And we insist that uh, if uh, many children are addicted by the, uh, by the game, then uh, and the uh, government limit the time to play, then many children will play no online video games after playing online video games. So. The situation will not change by this plan. And they haven't proved this motion is enough to solve such problems. Please go from this point. They haven't proved, proposition sites haven't proved this point in, the, in this debate. Please go from this point. And next, uh, I move to the second criteria. Who should restrict children's playing video games? We uh, oppo uh, opposition sides uh, insist that this is restricted by parents, child parents, not by governments, because <coughs> children. Uh, sorry, because how to uh, no thank you. How to raise and how to educate children is depending on their own parents. Please go from this point. Not government, but parents. How to educate and how to raise to their own children. Why no thank you. And, and also, so I think many people uh, give a question for me: Why the government prohibit alcohol and children's drinking alcohol or tobacco and like such thing? It is because that government have to keep the moral of society, not it harmful to the body of children like that. No, thank you. It is because of that uh, to keep the moral of society. No, thank you. And, and in this point, uh, the governments have haven't proved the differences between tobacco, alcohol, and the online video games. And also, uh, we, we can't believe that the online video games is harmful to keep the moral of society. We, okay. 
The example of tobacco and alcohol was clearly stated to provide to show how, how the government limits the access to certain things that each citizen wants to enjoy. It's not about the difference between video games and alcohol and tobacco. It's about how limits work and limits are better than prohibition. So, sorry, not so much please. The point was made in order to show how the government is entitled to limit the consumption yeah. of alcohol and tobacco, mm -hmm. which every which, and video games uh, as well, which mm -hmm. every person is allowed to, to, to have access to. We are talking about limiting the time and the access. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> so it is that keep. Uh, so it be, uh, Sorry. So it is because that we insist, as we insisted, uh, uh, it is because that to keep the more of society. So we restrict, uh, so the government restricts the drinking alcohol and, and the smoking of uh, children. Okay? And, and we, uh, as we insist that such, uh, yeah, and we insist that, uh, the, so and, uh, in, in the case of this motion about limiting the uh, big trend online video games, it is not. Uh, it should be not restricted by the government, but the uh, parents, because uh, because it can easily uh, understand. Uh, for uh, uh, sorry, parents can easily uh, can more e uh, parents can understand more easily that how much time they actually play the video games or like that. And, but the government cannot understand that um, the micro points. Please confirm this point. So we strongly believe that the, uh, such playing video games or like that should be restricted by the parents. And parents have the obligation to restrict the children playing video games. Thank you. Now we can. <laughs> now you can cross the floor, shake hands, etc. I'm not getting anyone's way. And speech. yeah. Don't go too far, hang around 